Okay, welcome everyone to this continuation of what are my favorite fields of mathematics, theorems, whatever you want to call it. Uh, very biased. And actually I'm still doing what are the most important, well, algorithms of the last century before we go to the more modern century. Um, and this one was a little bit difficult to place. So I decided to place it inside of something we could call numerical dynamics. So we'll comment on that as we go. Um, but yeah, it's, it's on the list. And as with every list, there's always something on the list where you wouldn't agree with, right? So if you do a list of whatever, there's something you wouldn't agree with. As soon as you put two people in a room, they will disagree on something. That's the usual not one. And this is probably the one where I feel is like the weakest position on the list. You have can decide yourself. We'll see the list in the end, but it, it, it's still a pretty cool thing um, and kind of comes with a lot of history. So let's try to have a look at the history actually. So the two body problem is depending on where you went to school is something you might have seen already in school, like literally solved in school. And uh, you could think of uh, the sun and the earth or um, like here two equally sized equally mass, not size, mass stars or something like Pluto and Charon. So Pluto is, um, what is actually the status of Pluto? That's a good question. So I will open Google, Dr. Google anyway. So let's try to see what is the status of Pluto. Um, Pluto, let's zoom in. Pluto is as of what the hell? As of almost, well, as of 2025, apparently a dwarf planet. Um, okay. So Pluto, the dwarf planet Pluto, uh, and it's a dwarf planet. So uh, it's, mo it's moon Charon is almost the same size and it will have something like, like an orbit like this. But the point is somehow you can compute kind of a general solution. And it's, as I said, not that difficult in the sense that um, you should be able to see it in school. Usually it depends where you go to school, but in some physics school class, you should be able to see it. So let's Google the two body problem because they have a nice animation which I just stole. By the way, there should be somewhere, not just this two body problem is the one we are going for, but there should be somewhere the academic career, the two body problem career. So if you haven't seen the two body problem in a career, it's actually more difficult than the two body problem in Newton mechanics. Um, it's essentially the idea of the following. So if you're an academic, it's already kind of super difficult to get a position. And anyway, academia is like super competitive. But imagine you're an academic and your partner is also an academic. This is the two bodies. And you're both trying to find a position at the same place because you have to stay together, right? That's known as a two body problem uh, in acad academia. And it's like much more difficult than, well, <laughs> than the usual two body problem. So here are the two animations. Maybe let's see this one here. Uh, looks like very stable to me. Very nice. Beautiful and stable Pluto and Charon, I guess. Or maybe something more like like this. Yeah. Two, two the same type of stars. Wonderful. Not too bad. Um, like very well known. It's, yeah, essentially Newton nobody did that, yeah. So let's let's uh be realistic. That's not very difficult. And interestingly, if you try the next case, the three body problem, that's what you do next, huh? Eh? The three body problem. It's like, um, yeah, it's, 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 let's say it's difficult. Uh, we'll see some funny, funny, fun animations in a second. Uh, it, it's really next to impossible. And somehow Newton already implicitly comments on that. So I, I, I read some uh, bit, bit of the history of the, of the uh, subject. And Newton is, of course, very careful and doesn't say it's impossible. But somehow it's implicit already in Newton's uh, famous princi Principia Mathematica, so this guy here, um, that this is probably impossible. It's like really difficult. And we're talking about kind of the general solution. Uh, and if the general solution is impossible, you usually go for specific solutions. And let's have a look at some of the specific solutions. So we just do the same trick. We Google three body problem and hope for the best. And we find, oh, that was not what I expected to find. 79% um, on Rotten Tomatoes. So let's go on. Yeah, three body problem mass. And if you go on the, this already looks pretty difficult, as you can see. And if you go on the Wikipedia page and just scroll down, it's one of my favorite animations. This one is really, really beautiful. And it just shows you some, um, some of the possible stable orbits of three equally sized masses. 
and it's like ridiculous. I mean, this one is pretty easy to understand, but this one is very different. I mean, this is my favorite, by the way. So you can pick out your favorite. This one is interesting. You know, the, the blue one goes just very circularly around, and the other two they like each other very much. And then you have this, this guy here, and or this one where two of them just bounce back and forth, and the blue one is going around, and whatever kind of strange things like this, or whatever you know, just some of the possible solutions. So there's a zoo of those solutions, and it's it's very very unstable. It depends very heavily on the starting positions. So um, a little bit of a nicer thing. So if you Google. Uh, three planar three body problem. So let's just do that. Planar three body problem. Um, boop, boop, boop. And maybe Mathematica demonstration. Uh, yeah, I should learn spelling. Math um, actually, I don't need to learn spelling. There's some AI, and this is kind of fine. Um, but it doesn't really matter right now. You should be able to find one of my favorite animations, which I'm going to run with you in a second. Um, my Wi Fi is very slow right now. So this one here, which we are going to run now because it somehow doesn't run live. So let me see whether I can make this a bit bigger. So here's the manipulate. Let's make this a bit bigger. Blah, 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 blah. And here's our little problem. Oh, this already looks really good. So let's stop this. So this has three equally sized masses and you can just decide where they start. Um, decide how far they go or how fast they start and in what direction they go and you can make one of them heavier or whatever and we'll see what happens it's just re it's remarkable it's just completely random what happens essentially so if you start in this position they do oh this is fun <laughs> so the green one just goes up to infinity and the other two they will kind of collide and just wrap around forever so let's make the green one a bit heavier. Let's see what happens if the green one... <laughs> this will be fun. If the green one gets a bit heavier. So let's see. So green one is a bit heavier. No. Oh god. <laughs> Blue and green really want, seem to like one another. And red just shoots off into infinity. Okay. Let's make the green one even heavier. Oh, this will be fun. Um, you can already see I could play this for the rest of my life. Like uh, if you want a 24 hour video, I could play this for 24 hours. No problem. Holy cow. <laughs> so it's 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 completely different. And now we make the green one a bit lighter and see what happens. Um, and now the red and the blue just bounce around, and so on and so on, whatever. And it make this a bit heavier and oh gosh, and this a bit heavier and God knows what happens. It's a very very oh this is fantastic. As I said, I can play that for uh, the next twenty four hours. But maybe let's not play it for the next twenty four hours. So this is next to impossible to solve, and you can literally see in the solutions why, because this is like very subtle. Depends on the initial conditions, and you get very very different outputs. It's kind of very very strange because the two body problem is like uh, unless you're in academia, it's like uh, I can do that, and otherwise it's like a little bit much much trickier. And this turns out was one of the main open problems to kind of describe the general solution for a long, long time. So essentially posted by Newton in one of the most famous books, I guess, that it was ever written. Um, again, Newton was very careful how to formulate it, but essentially Newton already kind of suspected, if you want, that this would be impossible. And then Poincaré eventually... Uh, probably the most important mathematician of the turn of the last century, like 1900-ish. So there's always this debate between French-speaking people and German-speaking people, whether the most important mathematician around the 1900-ish uh, was Poincaré or Hilbert. And yeah, it was Poincaré, let's just be realistic. Anyway, um, so Poincaré kind of came up with this whole idea of dynamical systems and chaotic systems and the butterfly effect and all that. The butterfly effect came, came later, but it's kind of the same idea. So something that is really difficult to solve because it kind of depends heavily on the input and the output is very chaotic, whatever you see, like weather would be, predicting the weather would be something uh, very, very similar. So people kind of realize that this is like difficult. So the kind of the better problem to ask is, can we at least somewhat numerically describe the solutions? Because there's essentially no hope to give like the, the maths general solution type thing for the n-body problem, not even for the three-body problem. And yeah, I don't have much time, I don't want to go uh, to it too much, but there is a very fast algorithm to do that. And with very fast, I mean very fast. 
you can essentially run it over uh, like think of a box of gas and you have some molecules there's millions of them and that's essentially an end body problem and you can run it over that because it is just linear yeah, in the number of bodies it's just ridiculously fast and you can even kind of set your so epsilon is kind of the tolerance epsilon equals zero would be the exact solution if you want and it, it's really kind of agnostic almost in the in the tolerance so um log of one over epsilon is really tiny in in general it doesn't do doesn't do all that much and this is known as the ffm the fast multiple method and the name comes from what you essentially do is there is a certain function with a pole, yeah, multipole. There's a pole somewhere, like this function here has a pole at, at three, and this is the red function, and you approximate that red function using something that is nicer behaved, like Chebyshev polynomials or something like that. And you can do that very fast, and you can generate um, solutions like in the, in, the, in a very fast way. And as I said, it's kind of really good. Not just it's linear in the number of bodies, which is like really, really fast. But also it's essentially agnostic towards the tolerance you want to have for the problem. Yeah, and this problem made it on uh, it's somewhere in the last spot. I'm not sure whether these are supposed to be ordered, but here it is the last spot on the algorithms of the last century. Um, so, and I feel like, sure, this is an important question. You can apply it to more than the Newton uh, mechanics problem, right? You could think of a box of gas or something like that. So it's definitely an important algorithm, but I kind of feel like it comes a little bit short when it comes to the others on this list. Um, but it just might just be my opinion on this, because obviously the problem itself has some historical weight, right? So the, the end body problem, hopefully it was reasonably clear. A lot of very smart people have thought about that. Um, if I would like to count Newton and Poincaré, for example, as smart people. Let's just do that. Let's just count them as smart people. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I also hope to see you next time.